going, and I've got three or four interesting set hands for them uh, today to, to go through. Uh, should we get started? Let's do it. Thanks so much, Jay. Well, welcome, everyone. And uh, yeah, welcome to everyone, those who've had bridge lessons with me before uh, in Yorkshire on bridge holidays, uh, those who've recently joined my online community, whether it be by the daily podcast I'm doing or these wonderful lessons. We've just finished a course of four lessons on double with Bajir, learnbridgeonline.com. Um, so, yes, and welcome to newcomers as well. There'll be some who are probably tuning in for the first time. Uh, so welcome to you. So what we're going to do is we go through three or four hands and do ask questions as you go along. Bajir will pick out one or two uh, of the most suitable and I'll answer them uh, in between hands. So I'm just going to go to the first hand. And here we go. We have a classic uh, north opening hand there. Yeah. So how many points have we got? Have a think, maybe put in your chat box as to as to how many, uh, what your opening bid would be. So 16, 21 points with a six card spade suit. So yes, I mean, for me, most of us play week twos now. So we can't open obviously a week two. It's perfect for two clubs. I say perfect, it's only 21 points, but remember a two club opener is 23 or more or game in your own hand. Yeah, so for me with a three loser hand, it's clear to open two clubs. Okie dokie. And let's have a look. Just turn the volume down at my end. Yes, well, I'd be between two bids with uh, with the south hand. Um, I'd be between two diamonds or two spades. And for me, it's just good enough for a positive of two spades. Eight or more points with normally a good five card suit, but here the six card suit compensates for me. Uh, two diamonds, of course, is naught to seven. Uh, a relay bid. You can never pass two clubs. You know that. It's forcing to game. Um, but actually, you know, two diamonds these days, players can do it with eight, nine or ten points. They, they use it as a relay bid. But here, I think it's important to get the long spade suit across first. Um, but a lot of the time, if I had eight, nine, ten points balanced, I would bid two diamonds as a relay. Uh, very good. And that's that. Yes. Well, what would you do as north now? And certainly when you visit this hand on replay uh, tomorrow or the next day or whenever, pause the video and see how you would have bid the hand and, of course, how you would have played it. Um, well, for me, uh, there's no point doing Blackwood. I've got an incredibly strong hand. Partners made a positive. I'm going to start us off on a Thursday morning with a blast. Yes, six spades. Here we go. I'm not too upset about missing out on seven because I'm never going to be able to find out about the, you know, the Queen of Hearts, for example, or possibly the King of Hearts. You know, really to bid a grand slam in bridge, you need to count 13 tricks. So we just blast away at six spades. That'll bring matters to a close. And South is playing it. Never worry too much that the strong hand is on the table. This often happens in bridge, as you know. Just the way the bidding goes. Obviously, we prefer to have the strong hand hidden. Um, well, standard lead of the King of Clubs. And yes, just have a think how you would play this hand now. I'm just going to have a think myself. What I'd be thinking... And I like to, most of you who have had my lessons before, know that I'll add, I like to count losers in high-level contracts, whether it be four spades, five diamonds, six spades. And for me, I'm counting a club to lose and a heart. We're strong in spades and diamonds. And superficially, you might think this contract depends on the heart finesse, in which case you would draw trumps and play the four of hearts to the knave. Okay, 50-50. And on this occasion, that would lose. You'd be one down. I'm going to show you how we can improve on those odds, actually to 100%. Let's do it. We win with the ace. Okay, we draw trumps, or should I say trump? Giving you a... Yeah, so my little tip, as some of you know already, is to throw a black card, just to make it look as though that might be a spade. You might sometimes catch a sleepy declarer out. Uh, but not today. I've been wide awake since about 6.30. Um, so with trumps drawn, before we fall back on that half finesse, let's eliminate the diamond suit. Can't do us any harm at all. There we go. Now we need to travel to dummy. And let's discard a club over here. And we play the queen of diamonds, which we rough. We're in a very good position now. We've drawn out the trumps. We've eliminated the diamonds, avoiding both hands. Do you see what we should do now? 
I'm sure some of you have. We play a club. Good. What we're doing is an end play, of course. And end plays, they are quite tricky. Yeah, you do need to spot them at the beginning. That's why we're practicing it now. But it's a really useful technique to have up your sleeve. I'd say one of the harder things for declarer. Uh, so what happens is they win with the queen. So when you do an end play, you eliminate the suit. You generally exit with a certain loser. Now, you will see that West is officially end played. If they play a club or a diamond, we get a rough and a discard. The eight of spades we rough with and the seven of hearts we discard. We make our contract because the heart loser goes away. So in practice, West would switch to a heart, hoping their partner had the knave or even the king. So they played ten of hearts. But look, we win cheaply with the knave. We don't need to take the heart finesse any longer. We now cash the king. And we play a small one to the ace. And that's it. Quite simply, the last few tricks are ours. I'm going to claim this one before anything untoward happens. Yes, it says minus 980 there. Just ignore that. That's clearly uh, plus actually 1430. Uh, uh, this BBO doesn't recognize my format of vulnerability. Uh, but don't worry, that's our slam made. Um, so a good one to get us going there. Um, key in the bidding, I think, was upgrading to the two club opener, realizing the strength of the hand, three losers. Two spades there was fine. If I only had five spades to the knave there, out of, with eight points, I'd have just bid two diamonds, by the way. Yeah, with five grotty spades, but six card suits, I'm going to bid two spades. But either way, we end up in the slam. And yes, we converted a 50-50 chance into a 100% one. The reason why it was 100% is when West led the king of clubs, we knew they had the queen. So when we exited with the knave of clubs, we knew that West had to win and open up the hard suit for us. The end play wouldn't have worked if East had had the king queen of clubs because they would have been able to exit safely with a heart. Um, well, there we go, Bajir. That's the first hand. Oh, um, my gosh. Questions. Well, what a fantastic hand to start us off with. Yeah, so uh, to all the viewers, feel free to uh, type in a question, and uh, maybe we can relay one or two. Jack, I'd love to uh, grab the chance just to ask, as a learner, yeah. at what point do you recognize um, this opportunity for an end play? And uh, is there a chance that you might be wrong. Is there a risk that comes with planning? Um, it's for it's an a very play? good question, Bajir. And actually, you, that's the difficulty of end play. There's two difficult things about it. And one is spotting it at the beginning. I think that's the most difficult. That just comes with experience. <laughs> you know, you've read a book, you've done the lessons, etc. So for me, I, I, having done lots of end plays in the past, it's relatively easy having done something before. If you're new to it, it's quite hard. But the key for me here was looking at a certain loser in clubs. And by eliminating the diamond suit, which I had enough trumps to do, and you mm. do need enough trumps, I realized that I could create a void in both hands, exit with that club, and get the opponents to open up a suit for me. Because generally in bridge, as you know as well, if you can get the opponents to play a suit for you, then that's so much better than playing it yourself. But it is mm. tricky, Bajir. I agree with you. It's mm. a really useful skill. This was a relatively simple end play. Uh, but I use the word relative uh, when I when I teach, yeah. And, and the second question, Bajir, was? Um, uh, let's see. Uh, right. Uh, risk that is involved. Uh, is, it, is there a chance that you yeah. might be wrong in terms of yeah. what you perceive? It's a very good question. No, there's no risk factor in an end play. As long as you've got plenty of trumps. And you'll often find, and if you don't uh, fully go through with the end play, just by exiting at the end, the opponents will often, you know, maybe play the wrong card. They'll set up, you know, play a suit they shouldn't do for you. Even if here the end play was 100 percent, you know, executed. So it was always going to work because we knew where the queen of clubs was. But quite often, as I say to my students, even if you only get two thirds of the way through, you'll find actually if you exit at the end, the opponents will open up a suit for you. Yeah. Mm, thank you for that. Uh, let me put through a question from Jane, who asked during the auction about a splinter bid. Yes. Um, it's interesting, Jane. Uh, hello, Jane. Yes, I know, Jane. Yes, you could have done a splinter bid. For those who play splinters, um, over two spades, you could bid four diamonds. But actually, with such a strong hand here, uh, and by the way, a jump to four diamonds over two spades, as you know, Jane, will show a singleton diamond and spade support. Splinters are for the more advanced, by the way. Um, but I don't really see the necessity to do a splinter here, Jane, uh, with such a strong hand here. 
I'm just going to go for six spades. It's not really that useful to tell my partner I've got a singleton diamond and they'll never really know the strength of my hand. So, yeah, uh, just blasting six spades was the best thing to do. Good question, though. And one more question from Angie. Uh, I think it must be if queen had been an east and east had queen of clubs, would this have worked? That's a very good question, Angie. Morning. Uh, and the answer is no, because if east had been able to win with a queen of clubs, um, then they would have pushed the heart through to the knave would have been covered by the queen, covered by the ace in dummy. The ten of hearts would always made. Very good question. Uh, if East had had the Queen of Clubs, this end play wouldn't have worked. The, the slam would have still been 50-50. Yeah. The King Queen of Clubs had to be with West, which we knew from the opening lead. Fantastic questions. And thank you, Jack. All right. Shall we uh, move on to hand two? Yeah. Shall I load up? I'll just load up hand two, Bajir, whilst we're whilst, okay. uh, there. You might just and want to tell them, Bajir, about what's happening on Monday. Absolutely. This would be yeah. a good chance while you're loading it up. So... Um, I'm just so happy to, I, I think a lot of you might know already, but Jack is starting an ongoing weekly class of online lessons every Monday uh, at LearnBridgeOnline.com. And of course, you are all most welcome. A lot of you are already enrolled in the class. Uh, many of you um, were with us for the doubles course, which uh, we just wrapped up. And so if you head on over to LearnBridgeOnline.com, uh, you'll see how easy it is to uh, sign up for the class if you need any help, uh, you can always email me, hello at learnbridgeonline.com, and I'll be here to help however I can. Um, yeah, we'll be sure to send out uh, some links to you, um, but it's it's pretty easy to find. I will also, it was mentioned earlier, I will also be sure to send out a replay for this live stream uh, to uh, LearnBridge Online's newsletter. I think Jack will also send it out to his newsletter. So if you are not subscribed to one of our newsletters, uh, but you would like to uh, receive the link to this live stream as well as um, other upcoming ones that we might have. Uh, be sure to sign up for that. So, uh, Jack, I think you're all ready to go. I will. Uh... I'm, set, I'm set. Let's let's go for hand two, Bajir. Yeah. All right. Okay. Welcome back, everyone. And this is the difficulty will be later. Uh, we'd love to get It makes life easier if you have like a thousand subscribers, easier to produce uh, videos like this. Uh, straight on for today's hand, it's a one heart opener. Jack, so sorry to interrupt. Sounds like yes. um, something weird happened when I uh, removed myself. And I think I, it sounded a bit like you were a robot for a second. There was nothing that you did on your end because I, I think it got clear as soon as I turned oh. off my, um, I, as soon as I put myself back. Um, so let me, let's do a quick test. Thank you everyone for bearing with us. I'm going to try uh, removing myself again. Yeah. Jack, let's just do a quick test. Say one sentence and we'll yep. see if, uh, if the okay. problem goes away. Okay. I'm just going to do a quick test, everyone. Just to make sure that everything's working again, Bajir, we had a slight technical hitch. Everything's okay at my end. Yep, and I think that sounded great. So uh, fingers crossed, we'll be in. Uh, we'll, and we'll hopefully, you can all see the second hand. South has got six hearts to the ace. Wonderful. Um, we'll talk about the subscribing on YouTube just a little bit later. Let, let's crack on with this one. Well, it's a one heart bid. It's the rule of twenty, everyone. Uh, most of you know about the rule of 20 we've got 11 points and it's added to the number of cards in the two longest suits six and four that comes to 21 so we can open a heart too strong for a week two by the way north well this is interesting with 13 points uh, you actually are strong enough to bid two clubs because you're going to get a second bid with 12 or more points so if i only had six to 11 points a week a hand i bid one spade here and forget about the clubs because you only get might only get the one chance to mention them. So it's quite a subtle point. But if you're 12 points or more, you can show the minor first. So you always get a chance to show the major next time round. Good. And uh, two clubs for Ackle players is 10 plus points. Yeah. There might be some five card major. Strong no Trump players watching. The bidding will be slightly different. Some some hands. Uh, but most of it will be the same. 
Uh, but two clubs here, Ackle, 10 plus points. Good. Uh, well, yes, would you have a think to yourselves? Would you rebid two hearts or two diamonds? I can't see your chat box, but perhaps you might want to put your answers in. Um, well, it's much better here to bid two diamonds. As we say as teachers, it's, and, and that shows five hearts and four diamonds minimum. Uh, as we say as teachers, it's better to show nine of your cards than just six. And partner might only have a singleton heart and four or five diamonds. Good. So it can do no harm. This is a forcing bid. Partner won't pass anyway. And here's the thing. North can bid two spades. And this is for those who aren't playing four suit forcing. Uh, they would bid two spades to show five clubs and four spades. But I play four suit forcing with my partner. So a bid here of the four suit is 12 or more points. Nothing to do with spades necessarily. But they probably won't have space most of the time. Here we do. That's just a coincidence. Um, but it is forcing to game. And it says partner more information. Very useful convention for you and your partner to play. 12 plus points. Any shape. Yeah, nothing to do with space necessarily. And it tells me to describe my hand better. Well, the, clearly the best thing I can do is repeat my hearts. Yeah, which must show a six card suit here. Uh, six hearts and four diamonds. And you as partner, of course, we've got a fit. Eight between us will bid four hearts. And that will bring matters to a close. Good. So we're well underway. Opening lead. Very difficult, the opening lead. Very tricky. Very tricky. What would you lead here, do you think? What would you lead? Sorry, this... <laughs> my landline's going off and I can't get rid of it. I, oh, I think it's gone now, so I couldn't get rid of it. Um, well, the, I don't like leading. Never lead away from an ace, but try not to lead away from a king. Um, well, here you see spades are the unbid suit, effectively. Two spades is artificial. North, south are playing four suit forcing. So they can lead the jack of spades. Yeah, I don't want to lead an opponent's suit. A trump would be very dangerous from king, jack, ten. So on occasion, I don't mind leading from a king if it's the unbid suit and it's an attacking lead. Good. No point covering. And should we play the ace of spades as east? Well, it's borderline. The problem is south might have a singleton king of spades. We don't quite know where the king of spades is. Partner might have it or declarer. So actually here, rather than lose to a singleton king, I'm going to plonk the ace on it. There we go. And I'm going to return a spade, which declare a roughs. And this is the main feature of the hand. We're going to draw trumps, trying not to look at east-west. How do you play? Well, we have six hearts to the ace, opposite queen x. It's a very useful suit combination, which many get wrong. Are you going to play the queen first? Are you going to play the ace? Or are you going to do something else? Well, many people here get this wrong. They play the queen of hearts from dummy. That would be covered by the king with east. You plonk the ace on it. You still lose two tricks. That's not a finesse. You'd always lose two tricks if you play the queen from dummy, wherever the king of hearts was. So the finesse here, well done if you spotted it, is a small heart, the three, towards the queen. Second player probably plays low. East might have a singleton ace or something. Rise with the queen. That is your 50-50. Very good. If the King Jack 10 been to your right with East, we'd have always lost two trump tricks. Now we proceed with the hearts. Of course, to the ace. Of course, West could have played the King of Hearts. It's a free world. They've still just made one trick. Uh, rule of one, if there's one trump left and it's higher than yours, leave it out. So now we can take the club finesse, which loses. They'll probably come back a club. To the ace. That's it. We can play out our winning diamonds relatively quickly. Here we go. So all winners in diamonds. And finally, we just play a trump, which of course loses to West's king. So we'll just play these last two out. Things that were nearly the end. And yeah, the last two are ours, of course. 
So, hand number two. Interesting. Ten tricks taken. That, that was, well, be plus 620, actually, if we were looking at the vulnerability. Um, useful hand. Uh, the key there was fourth suit forcing. And actually, we had space here. We might not have had any or singleton or two. Got us into the best contract of four hearts in our 6-2 fit. And crucially, in the play of the hand, well done if you spotted this, the finesse here is the two of hearts towards the queen. That was the winner. Yeah, anything else, you'd have lost two tricks. Um, so there we go, Bajir. Should we have a look? Oh, we have a couple of questions now, maybe. Ah, oh, fantastic. Yeah, well, we give, uh, we'll give a second for uh, the viewers yes. watching this. Type in a question, and uh, we can pass it along. Jack, maybe I'll ask you one while they're typing. Uh, with four suit forcing, does that bid communicate anything about strength? What exactly is a, uh, when we bid for suit forcing? What are we telling yes. partner and what are we do, uh, requiring or asking yeah. of partner? It's a very good question to come back to, Bajin. Of course, like any convention, you need to agree it with your partner. Uh, you'll find information on the web. Uh, but no, to bid the fourth suit uh, as open or responder, obviously, you need at least 12 points. So, you, need, you know, you need to have because your partner would have had 12 points as well. So you need to have enough points for game 12 plus. Uh, you don't have to have any holding in the suit at all, Bajir, yeah. Uh, two spades here could have been a singleton. It could have been a doubleton. It really just says, partner, we're going to game, but I'm not quite sure which game or mm. possibly slam. It's a really useful convention. Yeah, mm. like one of my favorites. And it means that two spades is forcing to game. So you can bid really slowly after that, knowing that neither side can pass. Very good. Ah, well, thank you for that. And uh, to the viewers, again, uh, your questions are most welcome, uh, uh, so send them through at any time, and at the end of each hand, uh, we'll pass them along. Um, let's see. Jack, why don't we, uh, why don't you load up hand three, unless there's yes. uh, something else you'd like to... Tell you what, Bajir, do you want to just, uh, should we look at that slide I prepared? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I I've prepared a slide for you, everyone, just to give you a demonstration, really, um, of what I'm going to be doing on my online classes on Monday at 9.30. Um, so we do about 10 or 12. Um, I present 10 or 12 Google Slides for about 20 minutes. I generally ask quite a lot of questions, and you can uh, you, you answer back, which is great. So it's very interactive. Um, and then we go through two or three, three or four set hands like we've been doing here on BBA. So that's the format of the lessons. It's very interactive. You can ask questions. Uh, well, I ask the questions. You answer them back. Uh, etc. So uh, this is four spades, a slide I prepared for you. Uh, south is the declare, as you can see, with ace, queen, jack of spades. So I'm just wondering how you would play the queen of clubs, everyone. Uh, sorry, play four spades on the queen of clubs lead. And really, this is just an example of a Google slide for you. So I'm, I'm going to go through it relatively quickly. Well, as you know, I like to count losers. And here I'd be counting a club loser and three hearts. So that's four losers. If I just merrily draw trumps here, I'm going to go one down, almost certainly. Especially as we know that West doesn't have the ace king of hearts because they didn't lead one. Yeah, the heart honors must be split or with east. Well, this is a technique we'll be looking at, as I say, in this course of lessons that I'm doing on drawing trumps, uh, d uh, not delay drawing trumps. Uh, we'll be doing suit combinations. We'll also be doing playing no trumps as well. One no trump, three no trumps. And if you're good, we'll do six no trumps maybe as well. Well, this hand here is perfect for establishing the five card suit, which many of you know I call gold dust when I teach. And here it is gold dust. It's golden actually as well. It's not the color of the diamonds. Um, so win the ace of clubs, everyone. Don't touch the trumps. Ace of diamonds. Diamond to the king. Yeah, don't fall back on the finesse. Rougher diamonds. So play the three of diamonds. Rough it high, and let's have some fun. It's Thursday morning. Let's rough with the ace of spades. Yeah, show the opponents we mean business. Then we play a small spade to the nine to get to dummy. We rough the fourth diamond with the ten of spades, let's say. So we've roughed two diamonds in our hand to establish the suit. We then play the ace of spades, low spade to the king. And you'll find at the end of the day that Jack of Diamonds is a winner. That will be your 10th trick. Yeah. Uh, in practice, of course, we'd go through the cards one by one on BBO. So you can see them out as well. But that's just a demo there, Bajir. I'll go back now to hand. I'm just going to load up hand three. All right. And just real fast, uh, really nice uh, comment um, left by Jane about this slide. 
And hey. so good. thank you that for Jane. And um, and Fraser left a good question. So uh, let's see. I would be tempted to let Spade return, run around to my queen, discarding the club. Would that be bad? Um, it, uh, I was going to let Spade return. Oh, is he is he thinking about the previous? Uh, hand? Got, yes, yes, yes. Ah, so, the previous hand, yes, which I think I've possibly just got rid of. Um, uh, oh, too, too bad. No, I remember it. No, we have queen to four in dummy, Bajir, and a singleton. So he'd be tempted. Where's this question gone? Oh, there we go. I'd be tempted to let Spade return, run around to my queen. Um, um, would that be bad? No, I quite like that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, what he's doing is kind of doing a loser on loser. Yeah. Now I like that phrase. Well spotted. Discarding the losing club, so you don't need to. Uh, yeah, it would actually come to the same thing as it happens. Uh, I'm just thinking though. Um, nah, yeah, no, I don't like that phrase. Actually, I'm just thinking about it because if you did that, then you would lose two spade tricks. If the club finesse is working for you you actually end up making an over trick. Yeah, very good question though from Fraser. Gave me a bit of time to think about that. But you know, in answer to the question, no, it is best to rough it because then you take the club finesse. If club finesse wins, you make an over trick. I'm afraid if you do it your way, you always lose two spade tricks. Yeah, good question then. Got me uh, thinking. Thank you, Fraser. <laughs> I, I imagine I'm, I'm not the only one who will have to go back in the replay to look yeah. uh, look these, at the hand again. These are tough hands, Vajir, that's the idea. Oh. You know, to give people something to think about. These are hands that most people, if they played them at the table, would go one down. There's no point in me just presenting hands you're going to make over tricks with. You know, here's 12 easy tricks. So I always say in my classes, one down is good bridge. The uh, mm. the students rather like that one. Um, <laughs> Only one down is like. Uh, you want to hear how that goes? That's one me down at my finest. <laughs> Two down is good defense. Uh, three down is there's the door. <laughs> and four down is pass me the gun. Oh boy! All right. We don't use Probably three. Really avoid that one. Yeah, we don't use three and four when we teach. So no, they're just going to arrive. You know, <laughs> that's we just among uh, among friends here we, here on uh, here on the interwebs. We stick to one and two. Yes, we're, we're mainly one. One down is good bridge. It's very popular with the students. Yeah, well, it's, it's certainly what I aspire to. Excellent, uh, Virginia. So, uh, when we go on to the next hand, one thing I I'd forgotten uh, to mention before. I sent yeah. through the link where um, uh, everyone can join the class. Uh, we decided to, we started with a promotion just for um, the students who are enrolled in Jack's course on doubles to make the first two weeks of his ongoing subscription free for them. We decided to just open it up. So it is available to everyone. The if you subscribe, the first two weeks will be free. You won't be billed um, until after the second lesson. So you can follow that link there. Um, and again, if you haven't learned online, uh, this is a good taste of what the experience is, except uh, when you're actually in the virtual class, the, the virtual classroom, all of your uh, questions and comments Jack can see and he's responding to all of them and sort of pulling you as, as you go. But it's a good taste, it's pretty similar, I think. But just one thing, uh, I think it was lost when my voice turned into a robot. Uh, I just. <laughs> I just thought I'd mention the um, the subscribe button on the YouTube. Is that right? Oh. That we, yeah. I just thought I'd mention that because we had over 200, I think, last time. But I just said to the viewers, it'd be lovely if we could get up to 1,000 subscribers on your channel. So all they I have so to do is click that. the subscribe button. No money changes hands. I think they literally just click it, don't they? Is that it? That's right. Yeah, I so appreciate you bringing that up. So it's probably yeah. right underneath one of us on the screen that you're looking. There's probably a red button. If you haven't already subscribed to LBO's YouTube channel, it is a free, it's totally free. Um, if you click it, it's something I'd heard other people who have YouTube channels always talk about. And I didn't really understand until starting this one up how helpful it is when you do subscribe. And at a thousand subscribers, um, some real benefits happen, including being able to link within the video directly to LBO's website and to be able to embed live streams like this into the website itself. And um, so if you would be willing to do that, I'd be most grateful. Um, so yeah, so I, I'm not sure. Underneath one of us, there should be a yeah. red button that says subscribe, yeah, it's, if it's you fairly, do that. It's fairly clear, Bajir. And then when we have when we get to a million subscribers, uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll have a drink. Uh, or a few. A few, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very good, okay. All right, thank you, Jack, that, that's so kind yeah. of you. Um, well, shall I press on with number three? All right, I can't wait. Hand three, we're getting through them nicely. 
And here, what have we got for you here? We have got a south as the opener. So that's one heart. Whether you're playing Akol or, or five card majors. Some of you watching will be playing five card majors. Strong no trump. Um, pass. So for Akol players, um, be slightly different for strong no trump players. What would you respond playing Akol? Bearing in mind, I might only have four hearts in an Akol system. Yes, I'm not guaranteeing five in the UK Akol. Well, two hearts here would only show six to nine points, you see. That's a problem. So we can't go two hearts. In fact, what we do, as I say a lot on my teaching, you just bid the longest suit at the lowest level. Yeah. So this is perfect for two clubs. And I never worry about bidding a poor quality suit. No, it's forcing. My partner's never going to pass. And a beauty of it is if we end up in three no trumps, which we might do, quite often, well, they won't lead clubs. I've had that a couple of times, bidding a lousy suit, ending up in three no trumps. They don't lead a club and I make my nine tricks. So, yes, never worry about opening, uh, sorry, about responding in a poor suit. Just like if South opened one heart, they might have four to the ten. No way strong enough to bid two spades. The, no, at least I'd like a good six card suit to come in there as East. Uh, three clubs by South. Yeah, just supporting our partner. Four cards. Yep, showing five and four. And over to North. Well, with 11 points, really, want to show our fit for hearts. So we bid three hearts, the major suit. Partner must have five now, having, having supported the clubs, five and four. And back to us as South. Well, what do you think as South? You've got 13 points. Are you going to bid game or are you going to pass? Well, those who've done the losing trick count, one, two, three, will count six losers. So you must bid four hearts. You're one better than you said you were, which was seven. It is a two-hour lesson at a later date, the losing trick count. For those who haven't done it, you must add on points for your singleton. Yeah, that's worth about an extra three or four points, I'd say. So your instinct or losing trick count will take you to four hearts. That's it. And again on this hand, we haven't got a particularly good lead. So I'd be between, um, well, you could go for a trump, if in doubt, trump about. You could go for a spade or a diamond. Well, when this hand was played, they actually led the two of diamonds, which is OK. Um, it's slightly stronger than the spade suit, king 10 to four, slightly stronger than king nine to four. It's quite dangerous leading from a king. It's not something that makes me happy, but I'm going to make a slightly attacking lead here. OK, so two of diamonds. And, well, this is interesting. Are you going to draw trumps or are you going to delay? Well, this is the main thing. I would count up my losers here. And almost certainly I've got an uh, ace of trumps to lose. I've got a couple of diamonds to lose almost certainly and a club. That's, again, four losers. So this is a hand that showcases really what we're going to be doing in the next four weeks um whether to draw trumps or not so might as well duck the first one no danger in that don't need to rush in with the ace they would return diamonds of course putting in the nine covered by the ten and we must win with the ace well have you decided whether you're drawing trumps yet or doing something else well i need to get rid of one of these losers so back to hand and this technique is one of the main, second most important time, actually the third, when you don't draw trumps. When you can, it's called discarding a certain loser. So here we go. Seven of spades to the queen. Should we hold our breath? Is it going to win? <laughs> I think it is. We had to risk that finesse, 50-50. Now we cash the ace. And away goes the losing diamond. Relatively simple when you know how to do it. Pretty hard to do, I think, if, if you're new to that technique. Um, notice, by the way, had the Queen of Spades lost to the King with East, we'd have been two down. But this is your only chance of making the contract, taking that Spade finesse 50-50. Now we draw the trumps. Fairly sharpish. To the Ace. They can try a Diamond, but we rough. Just rough high, just in case. We draw the last trump. I better hang on to a club. King of clubs. And give up a club. 
Yeah, we've still got a trump left, so we give up a club to the opposition. They can cash their king of spades. But we trump it, of course, and our winning club at the end. So there we go. Four hearts made. Um, but really, at the table, I think many would go one down on that. It's spotting that you needed to get rid of one of your losers. And counting losers is quite an advanced technique. You know, if you're, if you're not used to it, it'll take a little while, you know, a few weeks, maybe a month or two, or however long, just to get used to it. Uh, but it's looking at it from Declara's point of view at the dummy, Bajir. That's the key. Oh, thank you for that. Uh, Jane asked about um, free no trumps. Uh, I think that might have been, I think she might have placed it uh, at our second bid, uh, perhaps at the three club bid. Um, oh, she was thinking over over the three club bid by North bidding three no trumps. I, I'm not sure, actually, yeah. because I'm not sure when uh, the comment was placed. No, no, it's okay. But I think, Jane, basically, you know, we want to play in. I know North is very balanced, but with 4-3-3-3, three, 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 if we know partners got five hearts and four clubs, which we do, it's safer to be in the 5-3 major fit. Yeah, that's all I'll say. Because we were weak in diamonds. Yeah, they're better. And weak in spades, too, as well, actually. No, no four hearts is a better contract there. And I, I'll offer a question in there. Uh, and again, uh, for anyone viewing, feel free to type in a question. Uh, we'll relate to Jack. Uh, Jack, uh, for us learners, we often learn first. Uh, we want to draw trumps out. Here, we, we wait a little bit longer. What was it? And at what point did you recognize, you know, let's not draw trumps first? Yeah. Before we do that, there's something else that we it's want. It's a very to good do. question, Bajir. As beginners, you're dead right, learners. 75, 70% 70 of the time, draw the trumps. No, we've been looking at not drawing trumps here. And the main times you don't, we'll cover these in the lessons, of course, is when you can create a void on dummy. We're not doing that today. When you can establish a five-card suit. We had a look at that on the slide. And this is the third time this year, discarding a certain loser. Because I would look at this hand and think, if I lose the lead to the Ace of Hearts, which I would, they would take their two winning diamonds, their Ace of Hearts, and they'd come to a club. I'd be one down. So I'd be looking at this hand thinking, right, I'm going to lose the lead. I must get rid of that diamond first. If I have the ace king of hearts, that's fine. Yeah, draw trumps with the ace king. But here, missing the ace, we did need to get rid of that losing diamond by risking that spade finesse. Yeah, it's a it's it's a very useful uh, tool to have in, up your sleeve. Ah, that's helpful, and I'm sure it's a point that we'll keep coming back, yeah, coming back to. Uh, Jane uh, uh, followed up uh, spotting that singleton spade and changed her mind. <laughs> and uh, well done, Jackie, Jake. Uh, let's see. Jackie just put in a question. I counted five losers, but you only counted four. Aren't there two losers in clubs? Uh, oh, good question, Jackie. Uh, and hello, Jackie. Uh, yes. Um, no. Uh, you've got to. You've got to really assume, Jackie, that clubs will be three and two. Yeah. When you count your losers, assume a, a, a reasonable division. So if clubs are three and two, which is seventy percent roughly. Um, you've only got one loser. Yeah. If clubs are very, you know, if clubs behave badly and a 4 1, yes, you would have two losers and you would always be defeated. Yeah. So, good question from Jackie. When I count my losers and if I'm looking at a hand, I assume, uh, you know, a 3 2 division. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm an optimist, not a pessimist. <laughs> well, thank you, Jackie, and thank you, Jack. Now, uh, today, all right. got, I, we're doing quite well on time. I think we've got time for one more. Oh, goody. Yeah. You know, if people need to go, we've had about 40 minutes. Obviously, they can watch it in replay, but I'm, you know, I'm not going anywhere particularly today. Um, so, shall I have a look at the fourth hand? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to bring it up as we speak, everyone. If you do need to go, you can always watch in replay. And the other thing I just mentioned is many of you have signed up for my daily podcast. Um, six days a week, I give you one of these hands for intermediate and advanced players. I'm doing a two-week free trial at the moment. Just go to my website. It's nothing to do with Bajir. It's a separate entity uh, run by myself. Um, and my website is yorkshirebridge.co.uk. Yeah, and the details are on there. And I'll set it up for you, a free trial for two weeks. Uh, you get a hand similar to this, either for intermediate or advanced, uh, with my commentary. Um, right. Well, let's have a look at this final hand. This is an interesting one. So we'll have a one no trump opener. Yeah, we're playing Akol today, 12 to 14. And I hope you remember to do Stamen on the north hand. 
11 plus points and a four card major or, or both. Yeah, it doesn't work for five card majors. I mean, you could be weak stamen. Yeah, naught to 10 with 5-4 in the majors. That's a more advanced tip, but generally 11 plus points with a four card major. Now, what would you do with the East Hand, everyone? Have a little think about that. Maybe put it in your chat. Well, this is what we were doing last week, actually. A double of a conventional bid, a stamen or a transfer, ask partner to lead that suit. Okay, it's very useful. So you must have a good five card suit, it's just similar to this. Uh, we can bid two diamonds. Now, North could just go three no trumps, couldn't they? But they've actually, they've got, when they played this hand, what they did, they're an advanced pair, they bid three clubs. And that's a very interesting bid. I was very interested to see that because I'm not sure it's ever come up before. But it can't be a club suit because East must have all the clubs. So what it is, it asks South for a stopper. And I'm not sure if it's ever come up with me before, so it won't come up again for a long time. But I just thought it was really interesting that three clubs here must be asking partner for a club stopper. Because obviously East has shown length and strength in clubs. They're worried north about three no trumps. And here, of course, with a stopper, the king, we bid three no trumps. But that's very much an advanced bid, that three clubs. Don't have sleepless nights. Uh, just if you don't fully understand it, let it waft over your head like a warm breeze. Uh, that uh, I'm going to experience this afternoon outside. Um, very good. So uh, West dutifully led a club. Yeah. Otherwise, they'd have led a spade, you see. There'd have been no story. And here's the thing. Are you going to play the queen or the jack of clubs or the ace? Which one do you think? Have a little think about it. Trying not to look at the other cards. Well, I imagine a lot of players would play the ace of clubs at the table. And that would be wrong for reasons we'll look at in a second. To keep the communication open. And remember, with the queen and the knave, third player puts in the cheapest of touching honours. Are you going to win the king? No, I'm going to duck it. Okay, East must have the ace of clubs. They continue with a club. Let's say the queen. And I must take it now. Otherwise, I'm never going to make it at all. It would uh, be uh, squashed by the ace next time round. Okay, there we go. Um, so what am I going to do? I need some extra tricks. So I must take the diamond finesse. So fingers crossed, queen of diamonds. Here we go. Whoops, loses to the king, 50-50. And of course now, having withheld the ace of clubs, of course they've got a club to play back. They've retained communication with their partner to the ace. Quite a subtle hand, this one. I really... It's really uh, instructive. Uh, spade can go. W another winning club. And that's the end of the party. Yes, in practice, uh, say they come back a diamond. But that's it. I'm going to claim the last five tricks. Winning spades, winning hearts, winning diamond. So we'll just claim the rest. But yes, a really interesting hand to finish on, a defensive one. And defense is so important. So doubling of the stamen showed a club suit. King, queen to five. Points, well, eight or more, I'd say, roughly. Uh, king, queen to five clubs. Ace, king to five clubs. Anything that you want the lead. Ace, queen, jack's perfect. Um, and then crucially in the defense, look what would have happened. Had the, uh, I'll just show you, actually. I can just load this up. We've got a second. I'm just going to load it up again, like I do sometimes on my podcast. So where are we here? Just load this one up again. So I'm going to show you what happens if the defence gone slightly differently. Good. So we'll just fast forward the bidding. It was three no trumps by South. And we still led the two of clubs. But look what happens in the replay. If it rises with the ace, which I'm sure many players would do. Now they play the queen, which I duck as before. Very good. But I can afford to take the third round now with the king. Uh, spade can go. I go to dummy as before to take the to take the diamond finesse, which loses as before. But guess what? They have no club to return. East's hand is cut off. The communication has been severed. We'll just fast forward to the end. Uh, contract making plus one. 
So on the replay, of course, three no trumps made with an over trick. Very subtle, that. Uh, and I love that doubling of the two clubs for the lead and putting in the knave. So there we go, Bajir. That's quite a, quite a fun hand just to finish off the defensive one. Oh, for sure. A uh, question from Cheryl. Really good question. If, um, when we all can go back to the Bridge Club, if we are asked what that double means, how, um, how specific, what do you need to tell? Uh, hello, Cheryl. Yes, welcome back. I think you watched the first live stream. Um, it's a very good question. Yes, certainly, if they ask what it means, uh, you would have to tell them, yes. Oh, very much. Lead directing. Uh, yeah, it's not like poker where you kind of lie and tell fibs, you know, as part of the game, you know, to bluff. At Bridge, you very much, you would never want to uh, hoodwink the opponents, yeah. So you would say it's a lead directing double. And if they ask for more information, you would said, yeah, they've got, you know, a, a good club suit. It, it's doubling for the lead. But certainly, yes, you have to be as honest as your opponents as you possibly can. Um, yes, and uh, and you, you're allowed to ask what the bids mean, but you must, of course, give the right answer. But yes, good question for when you when you return back to your bridge clubs, which hopefully won't be too long. And uh, another, Jeremy uh, uh, pointed out a question by without having noticed about hand one. So let me oh, pull yes. it up. This is a question from Judith. Oh, yes. And uh, maybe you can help us up. Hi, Judith. So if South yes. had bid two diamonds, what would North have bid next to get to small slim? Um, which... And again, this was for hand one. Oh, hand one. Oh, yes. Interesting, Judith. Yes. That was the one where we had the slam. Um, shall, shall I pull it up quickly, Bajir? Ah, uh, sure. Yeah. It takes me only a second to pull it up. So let's just pull up that first hand, Judith, where we're we. Hands one and two. There goes this monster hand. Uh, upload to table. Yeah. I'll just pull it up for you. So had it gone two clubs by North, well, we did, and, and uh, South gone two diamonds, which is understandable. Some players would. Um, I'd have rebid two spades on the North hand, forcing to game. No need to jump because any suit bid after two club opener is forcing to game. Whatever happens, South must bid with no points. Um, interesting then because South, we'll just do the bidding for you, actually. Let's have a go because we've got the facility. So a two diamond response. There we go. Come back with two spades. Now, funnily enough here, not everyone knows this, a bit of four spades is a shutout, principle of fast arrival. So three spades is a stronger bid than four in this sequence once you've opened two clubs. So useful one uh, for people to pick up on. Three spades says I've got a better than rubbish hand. Yeah, with at least three card support for spades. That two spade bid always guarantees five or more spades, by the way after a two-club opener, would never, ever be four. And quite simply, as before, pass there, we go to six spades. Yeah. So we get to the same contract, Bajir, um, just by a slightly different route. Mm. Funnily enough, though, interesting, if North plays uh, the slam here, um, is the end play going to work? Let me see. They'd have to lead. Uh, yes, I think it probably still would work. Yeah. Yeah, so it doesn't matter who plays it. But interesting question, isn't it, how the bidding changes? Ah, for sure. And thank you guys for leaving those questions. Uh, Kate is asking a follow-up question about that double and uh, what we need to communicate to the opponents. Can you volunteer that lead request info if you double? Uh, yes, yeah, she just wants me to follow up. And Hello, Kate. Thank you for your support. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, it's just a lead directing double. So if it was uh, two clubs double with a club. So if it was a two diamond bid over one no Trump uh the double says I've got diamonds. Yep. King, queen, 10 to five, ace, king to five diamonds. Really just a good holding in their suit. Um, it might also be that you want to compete in diamonds. You know, you may, may end up playing in three diamonds if you double their transfer bid of two diamonds. Um, just one final thing, Bajir, and another tip. I like to get as many tips across as possible. If you're playing Blackwood, one spade, four spades, four no trumps, if you reply five hearts, a double of the five hearts bid by the opponent shows lead a heart. Yeah. King, queen, ace, king, king, jack, ten, anything like that. So it can apply to a double of a Blackwood bid as well. Quite For, easy up your sleeve. This is turning into a good conversation. Fraser yeah. brings up, could that be perceived as a waking up partner? So if you yeah. volunteer it without it being asked, 
<laughs> uh, no, yes, yeah, certainly you're allowed to make the double, but you're not allowed to say anything about it. No, you're only you're asked. Asked. yeah, you, you have to be asked by the opponents. Otherwise, uh, yes, you might as well put all your cards on the table and let everyone see them. Uh, here you go. Yeah, so you, you would need to be um, to be asked. Yeah, but you don't need to be asked. Yeah. And uh, Judith asks a question about that two to three spade raise. Oh yes, so uh, I would have been to the two to three. That's having just three spades in South. Uh, yes, uh, South might just have had three spades, but Judith, remember when you open two clubs and rebid a suit of two spades, forcing to game. Yeah, so there's there's no way that either North nor South can stop short of game on this hand uh, that we've just looked at. Yes, the six spade hand. Yeah, I so think it's, I'm not a, it's not a regular limit bid because of that two club opening bid. <laughs> well done, Bajir, to pick up on that. No, it's not a limit bid. It's not like one spade, three spades over a two club opener. It's forcing to game. The only time, and here's another tip, the only time it's not forcing is if I open two clubs, Bajir bids two diamonds negative. I rebid two no trumps. Yeah, 23, 24. Now, Bajir, you've got zero or one point, as you often have. Um, you pass. <laughs> not that we played bridge together yet, but no. Um, if Bajir had zero or one, opposite of two no trump response, everyone, it's the one time you can stop short of game. And you pass. You, you play in two no trumps. So that's another useful tip. Hi, indeed. Well, thank you, Jack. And thank you, everyone who joined us today. Um, it really means a lot that you would join us wherever you are. Uh, I'm sure I speak for Jack as well. We hope you're taking good care of yourself. And um, you are always most welcome uh, either at his site or at LearnBridge Online. You can reach both of us directly. And um, yeah, it really means a lot to have you guys here. If you don't mind, please click that red subscribe button underneath yep. one of us. And oh, yeah. if you are interested, uh, uh, subscribe to Jack's ongoing weekly lesson uh, before Monday and the first two lessons will be free. So let me just quickly send through a link for that as well. You'll, you'll send through the link, Bashir. Yes, I'm, I'll be preparing some slides and some uh, animated hands for Monday. I'll be getting going on that tomorrow. Uh, so we'll look forward to that. I know a number have already joined up. Thank you for supporting the doubles and coming along. And thank you to all the online community. You know, when kind of when the lockdown happened, it was doom and gloom for bridge teachers. Um, and running bridge holidays was a was a nightmare. We cancelled four holidays. That's mm. the main thing what I do. So uh, it was thanks to Bajir, thanks to the Internet, thanks to you for supporting my online classes. So mm. after about two weeks, I, you know, I realized I had to do something and of course, created the podcast, the daily one, and then Bajir came along, and and the lessons have been brilliant, really. And I think really one good thing that's come out of this is that the lessons, my lessons, can reach everybody now, not just people mm. in the locality, uh, mm. you know. And 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 they don't have to travel anyway; just tune in for an hour. Um, I mean, the, the the podcast I do is five or six minutes a day. So mm. yes, it's it, and thank God for the internet. I mean, two years ago where I live, we had we had one point five megabyte, I think. Mm. You know, uh, if we did, I only had uh, super fast put in here about a year ago. Mm. Oh, I'm so sure I, grateful. I'm grateful for the chance to be able to learn from you from across the other side of the world. Still get to take classes with you. So. You're, you're learning as well. That's great. You're <laughs> I sure am. That's that's really. <laughs> Someone yeah. wrote an email saying, "I think I can see what's really going on. You just figured out a way you can learn from all Some these great bridge teachers for free." Some people have said to me they really like the idea that you know you're a learner too. And, you know, you can ask the questions and, you know, and they like that idea. I've, I've been accused a couple times of pretending to be a learner. I can promise you I'm not. I'm sitting in the student seat along with everyone. Jack knows because sometimes my questions uh, will reveal my uh, limited knowledge. <laughs> no, that's I, great it, it really is a pleasure. You're the man on the street, Bajir, you see. You know, that's <laughs> great. You know. uh, yeah, <laughs> not quite anyway. Um, <laughs> Well, Bajir, yeah, that's great. I've really enjoyed this um, second session. I'm sure we'll do another one possibly in a few weeks' time uh, just to, you know, it's really nice just to, for people to appreciate, I think, you know, during this uh, this time of not being able to go out and play bridge, uh, just, you know, giving everyone an hour and, and, and some lessons. Thank you, Jackie. Yes. Uh, nice to see you again. And Diana, some thank yous coming in now. Mm, Cheryl, there you, we go. Yes. <laughs> this time. Well, thank, exactly you. Right. thank you, guys, everyone. What, what a lovely group joining us live. And um, yes, this will be available for replay and to everyone who does watch this replay, our warm greetings to you as well. So um, until next time, and hopefully we'll see many of you on Monday in Jack's next class.
class. I'll be waiting, Bashir, on Monday, 9.30. And as someone said, certainly for English, and we've got many Irish viewers, Scottish, Welsh, uh, Northern Ireland. Uh, that's everyone inside Great Britain. But, uh, you know, 9.30 in the morning um, is a great time, I think. Um, you know, it's a really receptive time for learning. And you've got the rest of the day, you know, to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Well, I look forward to it. And to everyone else, thank you again. Until next time, take care. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Jack. Bye.